So my video cut out and um, yeah, I was, you know, in the middle of talking about how I lack discipline because I didn't have anyone to teach me discipline. So like, I think, you know, that definitely has a negative effect on not only me, but my partner. Um, but yeah, I don't know. So we come from two different worlds. And I just want to say, like, <laughs> this really kills me. It hurts me. It hurts me really, 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 really bad. It hurts me really bad. I don't know why. Um, as a girl, like, as a little girl, I always craved, craved, craved a uh, friendship, you know? I always wanted a friend, and I had a couple along the way, you know? Not, like, really, really, really close friends, but just friends here and there, like, all my best friends were kind of, like, not very nice, like, I had one in my childhood who would, like, really pick on me in front of other people and, you know, make, try to make me look bad and just, like, saying stuff that she knew would embarrass me and, you know, and she just was really mean to me, like, she, I know this is crazy, I was a little girl, okay, she uninvited me to her birthday party because I brought up her dead rabbit and she told everyone in our group that if they talked to me, that they weren't allowed at her birthday party too. So I was avoided like the plague. And this lasted for like weeks because it was way before her birthday party. And I mean, I remember one girl, she was like, I really want to talk to you, but I also really want to go to her birthday party. <laughs> and oh, it was so terrible. And so yeah, my experiences with friends have been really rough. Uh, my last... I finally, you know, I did find a best friend, and, you know, when you're broken, you kind of meet people who are broken, too, and I met her, and we just clicked, you know, she just was such a good friend, but, um, long story short, she's actually dating the ex that I talk about now, <laughs> so, it's like, and that was cool with me, you know, like, I, for me, like, I, I cared about them both a lot and I knew that he would maybe like have a rough time and I wanted her to you know and she couldn't she just can't take care of herself so long story short I don't even long story short like I love her a lot but she like basically she stole her stepfather from her mother right and it's called a Lexa complex you can google it it's really crazy so she like competed with her mother and then I met her like two months after she left her stepdad and um, well to put it mildly she was lost I was lost so we got along really good we were both lost and um, she just she didn't really know how to take care of herself very well she knew how to get a guy to help them take care of her and so you know she ended up long story short kind of making this guy get her pregnant and he was mentally like not capable of being a father he really wasn't and so he left and then she was kind of on her own with this baby which this baby was such a gift to her because she was lost and I like to say children are divine intervention they I've seen them really save some people from the depths the deep deep depths of you know bad bad places and so but she was really struggling even though I did you know everything pretty much I started her up with her own business and did as much as I personally could to make sure she could thrive she just I don't know she's one of those women that like really needed a man I guess and so like when she told me that uh that my ex was being really nice to her I was like because he hated her oh my god he hated her so much he was so jealous of her he used to give me so much grief over my friendship with her because she wasn't good enough no one was good enough for him you know um but she wasn't good enough she was this she was that she was this i mean everything he would say so when she said he was being nice to her i was like wow good you know that's awesome take advantage of it and let him help you anyway because he should you know um so yeah, and then it turned into them dating, which I was totally cool with. Like, alright, cool.
school. <laughs> but then I became enemy number one. And so pretty much last time I talked to her, she said, uh, I wouldn't be messaging my ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend. And I was like, since when did you come become like his girlfriend rather than my friend? It's like, okay, whatever. So it just ended, it didn't end good. It didn't end good. And my heart essentially was broken. You know, even though I had to leave town, like I left town because I was like, look, I need to just get as far away from this place as I can. And apparently she acted like I abandoned her or something. I don't know. Like, you know, maybe I didn't text or message as much as I could have, but I was always there. She needed something, message me, but she didn't need to because, you know, whatever. I obviously still have feelings about it and I'm sorry I'm letting it out, but my point is, is I don't really have any friends. My dad is my friend, so dad, thank you. He's really the only one I can vent to when I have to vent. And uh, yeah, so I'm letting you guys know, I know I have never done this before. And you know, it's like, why share your business with the whole world? My partner doesn't get it, but it's like, what else am I gonna do? I don't know. It's just what I feel called to do, so. With that said, yeah, I'm lacking on the discipline part of life. And so, like, when you should walk away from something, sometimes I don't. Usually, I just, I'm good at, like, not being super confrontational. But there's sometimes where I get emotional and then it just, the emotion kind of takes over and I can't necessarily stop myself. I just want to make sure the first half of this video, I'm not going to be able to. It's uploading. Okay, it is. Last time I touched the screen and everything stopped, so I'm going to try not to touch the screen again. So yeah, we basically come from two different parts of the world and different realities, 100%. Um, after my sobriety, you know, I went from a super like negative mindset about the world to a really positive one. And everything that I experienced like really solidified my new belief that, you know, life is actually very beautiful. And, you know, the world he comes from is much different, different than mine. And I'm not saying he's wrong at all. You know, he uh, came to America like 20 years ago and moved from South America to uh, Jamaica, Queens, New York. So he went from one jungle to the next. And, you know, it's not, he said it was easier there than his home, but still like living in such a harsh environment you know it really you have to be in touch with your more primal side and just to survive and so um whereas I maybe look at life through like what people would say rosy colored lenses he has a very realistic view of how people really are how the world really is and so we kind of butt heads sometimes because like I like to believe that anyone who comes into my path is divinely put there, whereas, you know, to him, everyone is kind of the enemy, and you have to be really careful about who you let close to you, which I get in a way, you know, I've been preyed upon because I'm so, like, I guess naive, I don't know the word, I don't know, so we have that going against us, and not only that, like, I refuse to believe, like, I refuse, <laughs> because me, I believe this all is just a figment, not of my imagination, like, I realize we're here, we're really experiencing, but I believe, like, we're defined by what we believe, and that is what we manifest into our reality, that's what we experience, so I'm very, I try to be really careful about what type of thoughts I put in my head, not only that, what I believe, even though I'm still, like, like, for him, because he wasn't raised in the United States, he can see reality for what it is. Whereas if you're born in, um, you know, the United States, for instance, you're kind of born into a system and it's hard to see outside of that system because you're so confined by it. You're bred in it. You're born in what you live. So like we, people in the United States, uh, we really restrict our, our nature, you know, like, let's say someone makes us angry or does something crazy like in the jungle they would get murdered you know but here we just bite our tongue and we don't say anything and i'm not saying you know we should be primal like that but it's like we really um 
oppress who we are, who who our nature as humans are. You know, you gotta look at nature. When I say nature, look at the animals because that's the animal kingdom. We are in the animal kingdom, but we think that we're like somehow above it. And while we have logic reasoning, you know, we're still confined and restricted to this nature that is within all of us. So, you know, when you oppress certain things about yourself and, you know, you live in kind of like a circus, you just, it's like you can't see things for the way they really are. And you live in, like, not delusion, but kind of a delusion. So, I don't know. So back to the beliefs. I'm trying to really get to the core of my beliefs and where they come from. And he's really helped with that, you know, because he has got a completely different perspective, one that no one I have ever met has had. But at the same time, there's certain things like I don't want to let go of. Like, for instance, and this is something I go back and forth. Like, um, if I believe that something is bad for me and I do it, then it's going to have a bad effect on me, right? So the same goes for, like, if you think something is good for you. It's almost like the placebo effect really applies to everything. You know, you are what you believe. You are what you really think. So be careful what you're thinking, not only about yourself, but about the world around you. So, yeah, we just, there's some things, you know, I don't know if I'm naive or I just don't want to see it or he says I close my eyes to like what's really going on in the world and it's like I don't want to close my eyes but if I if I see that type of stuff how am I supposed to maintain a loving disposition and you know spread and be that type of energy that we all should try to embody like how can I be that person if I'm so bogged down by what's going on in the world I don't know I don't know and I'm it's like am I taking the easy way out am I too detached I don't really know and so I'm trying to figure that out and it's hard because you know like I don't I want to help people suffering I want to make a difference for those people suffering but does that necessarily mean that I have to you know let my life be consumed by that same suffering and go back into a, the same state of suffering. I don't know, and I got in, I got into an argument with my friend, a good friend of mine, who you know, he basically said like, open your eyes and see if if that person's hurting, then so am I. And I mean, I get that, I really, really do. But I lived my whole life in pain, and I finally found a way out. Like, does that make me selfish for not wanting to go back? Like. Does that make me, you know, does it make me selfish? I don't know. From detaching from that, like, I don't know. Maybe I am. I don't know. I'm really still figuring that out. And when I do, I'll let you all know. But anyway. Um, so, yeah. But basically, why relationships are so hard. And I've boiled it down to this. We are a product of our experiences, right? What we experience shapes and mold the person we become. We're also a product of our DNA. Um, we are, you know, down to the, the thoughts that we have, the feelings, you know. Me and my dad are pretty close and I'll tell him what I'm thinking, what I'm feeling, and he'll be like, wow, you sound just like me. Like, those are the thoughts I have. Those are the feelings I have. So uh, I think we are... I don't think we're bound by it, but definitely if you don't have the awareness to alter your DNA, you're going to definitely find yourself restricted by it. So um, we're a product of our DNA, we're a product of our uh, experiences, and we're also a product of our environment. And you can see this in plants, and you can see it in people too actually, but let's look at plants for a minute. Plants that grow in warm climates, right? They tend to grow really tall and fast, and it's like a fight. Like, if I don't get really tall, I'm not going to get that sun because all the other plants around me are going to get the sun, you know? So plants, they'll, they'll go for miles and miles. And my video tomorrow is going to be uh, about the video I said I was going to do yesterday. I just had some reserves about it because it may be kind of like a controversial topic. So, um, But either way, this is where I basically learned about plants for the most part and how they grow but yeah the the warmer climate plants definitely grow very tall very fast whereas your cold climate plants they tend to like stay short like 
like like they're harvesting their energy just to you know they're just trying to stay warm you know so they don't grow real tall real fast but they kind of grow like outward but they don't grow as fast at all and i would like to think it's because it's so cold and harsh environment and then if you look at people from uh, northern climates like you know uh, whiter people usually they have this long straight hair because they need the hair to cover their necks to stay warm and we have you know the the smaller noses because if you're in the arctic for, as an example if if this is too open you'll freeze you know you, you want to keep yourself warm and we ha tend to have a lot of hair because that hair on our body also keeps us warm whereas people you know from southern climates that are really hot they tend to have you know like the really curly hair that that stays off of their shoulders unless they grow it really long but even then if it's long it goes up rather than down so their hair is meant to help them cool down as well as their nose you know you need bigger nostrils to cool the brain down when it's really hot and then they don't usually have a whole lot of hair on their body so you know genetically we are um, built based upon our environment so all of these things lead into who we become um, and then you know I think also like who we are on a who our soul is who our spirit is that also has something to do with you know who we become but basically you know when you are so different from anyone even brothers and sisters why they fight is because they're seeing through different eyes they're feeling through a different body like everything even though we all feel the same emotions we all think different well i guess we all have different beliefs based on what we're seeing so it's like how can i always got so this part bugged me like how can i read this poem and it really touched my my heart and then you know someone i love really close to me reads the poem and it means nothing to them it doesn't even they're like eh, yeah whatever nice poem and i'm just like that that meant so much to me and they're just like oh, i don't see what you see in it and I used to get so offended, but I learned it's a matter of perspective. You cannot feel the same as someone who has not had your experiences. You can't think the same as someone who hasn't had your experience. You can't believe the same. So when you're, you know, with people that are so different from you, if you don't have the mind and the patience and the understanding to, to realize that everything that comes out of their mouth is probably going to trigger you in some way because it goes against what you believe, Good luck. And I forget that sometimes and I tend to get caught up in my emotions and you know with the full moon it's an emotional time and so I've been there, I've been having it, it's been rough and I pretty much cried all night last <laughs> I did. And I'm laughing because it's like how else can you deal with pain? Like you gotta laugh. You got to. Or I would be crying still and I'm done crying because you know what? It doesn't get me anywhere. It just makes me feel bad. And I feel better now. My headache has gone away. So that's a plus. And um, I hope I haven't really, you know, like put my energy on anyone else. I don't, I don't know. I guess I just not thought of it. But if, you know, you know why relationships are so hard. You know, this is besides the, the relationships are hard because we're all programmed in a very bad way like women are programmed in society right now to be all about money success status i mean there's women that i see that are posted if you don't make this much a year don't even talk to me and i get like as far as survival needs that is like what some women have to do but it's like that's terrible that's terrible because not only are you going to have a lot of very lonely women, you're going to have a lot of really lonely men. You're going to have a lot of lonely people because right now women are trying to capture, so to say, 20% of the men, but that still leaves 80%, you know? And obviously not all of those women are going to get the top 20% of men, so it leaves a lot of lonely women and a lot of lonely men. And I always say especially to women that I talk to, lower your standards because your standards are not based in reality. You know, we've been programmed with romantic, like ro uh, romantic movies and 
fantasies and so it's like um that's not reality it's not the world we live in a lot of that stuff doesn't really happen in the real world and if it is the people are living in the delusion which i'm not saying love doesn't exist love is not some fleeting emotion it's work <laughs> love is work it's hard all right so with that said i really hope that better days come ahead i really did some damage today and i'm really sorry i don't know where you'll end up watching this but i am sorry i'm gonna work on it it's like i won't even talk to him right now because you know just give him a space and I don't know, he's the type of person that doesn't really get over things. Me, I say something or something, somebody says something to me and I like, get hurt about it, but I get over it relatively quick. And he said it's because we have different blood types. I don't know if that's true. I'm O positive, he's AB negative, so it's, he said that his blood type is not good at just letting go of things and forgiving. And, I don't know, but I do love him, even though he would tell you different today. He would tell you different today, but I'm learning, you know. I wasn't taught by loving people. I, I mean, they loved, but I didn't see love growing up. My mother was alone. She was working her butt off, and so, yeah, I didn't I didn't see what that, what that means, so I may sometimes not be very good at it. And it's not because I don't love, it's just because maybe I don't know the right way how to love. So, but I still think fate and a higher power, something much greater than us, or maybe us on a on a, another dimension are like, okay, we need to put our pawns together. We'll do better together. I know somehow we were meant to just really complement each other because we're so similar yet we're so different and the ways were different it's like everything I'm missing inside of me he has and he would say it's not when the coming to him he says he has it all which he does but I like to think that the things he's lacking I are my strong suits so I don't know anyway you guys I'm gonna cut this off I think 40 minutes for anyone who watched this I love you thank you comment below let me know what you think um yeah tell me why you think relationships are so hard if i'm missing anything if you have any advice if you have any advice shoot it to me because like i said i don't have a lot of people to bounce things off of so i'm throwing a throwing a line out there hopefully i can reel me some good info in so all right you guys take care Enjoy the rest of this 21, or no, 10-day portal. I don't know what's going to happen. I hope it's much better than the first two days of this. I thought it was going to be good, but it's been pull your hair out crazy. So, all right, you guys, have a good night.